This is a lesson on the energy stored by capacitors in the unit on electrostatics. The point of capacitors is to store energy. That's why we use capacitors. They hold charges a distance apart. And what we know is that potential energy is stored in the configuration of charges or the electric field. And here's an expression of that. The U, this is a potential energy for the capacitor, the symbol. And um, this shouldn't be surprising. We know the electric potential energy is Q times V. And Q in a uh, capacitor is given by CV. So we're looking actually at one half of a capacitor. So we get one half the charge. And you can see that's where this equation arises. The electric potential energy in the specific case of a capacitor. There's equivalent versions because of the CV. Uh, when I plug in CV in for Q, right, I can plug CV in for Q, you can see how that would give one half CV squared. I have CV times V and that's CV squared. And equivalently for this final expression. So whatever you know in the problem, you have multiple ways to calculate the, to relate it to the energy. I'm going to note with multiple capacitors, you need to consider the quantities for each capacitor separately. So they may ask you what's the energy on capacitor 1, which is different than the energy on capacitor 2. You would if you're looking at capacitor 1, you would consider the energy only on capacitor 1, 1 half C1 V1 squared maybe. As opposed to capacitor 2, where the C2 and the V2 would be different. You can't just use the same voltage in all of the individual capacitors. Or you can use the equivalent if you're looking at the total circuit. You can say U total for a whole circuit equals 1 half uh, C equivalent V from the battery squared. And that would be a way to look at the energy for the whole circuit. And notice that the energy on all the individual capacitors would be what adds up to the total energy of the whole circuit. So I'm just going to look at an example of a very simple circuit. We're not going to do multiple capacitors. We're going to look at just one capacitor. And what I chose is a situation with a biological uh, application. Um, and that is the electric potential energy stored in a defibrillator. So here's a picture I grabbed off the internet of a defibrillator circuit. And what happens, this is what happens is initially the switch A is closed like this. And what happens is this battery charges up this capacitor. And this capacitor gets a plus Q on this side and a minus Q on this side. And then once the capacitor is charged, it's unhooked from the battery. The capacitor is then ready to release this charge to discharge and give a shock to the heart. Okay, so the, this would be the defibrillator pads that you would put on a person's body is um, here and the heart is between them. And note that when um, they put defibrillator pads on the body, they go from shoulder, the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the torso and you get the heart in the actual electric field between those two paddles. Um, and so that's the easiest way to do that is across the body there. Okay, so that's the circuit. And you can see that um, there's some sort of voltage that goes through the heart. There's some sort of maximum voltage that capacitor will discharge until there's a no net charge on it. The capacitor will discharge until there's no polarization on its two plates. So let's read what's going on here. It says the electric potential energy stored in the capacitor of a defibrillator is 75 joules. Okay, so electric potential energy, the energy stored is 75 joules. Okay, the capacitance is 125 microfarads. So I am going to write that down. Um, 1.25 times 10 to the negative six. That's to the negative six. What is the potential difference that it exists across the capacitor plate? So I'm looking for voltage. So V equals what? So when I look at this very straightforward application of this uh, equation of plug and chug, I can't use this version of it because there's no voltage on it that doesn't help me. 
I can't use this version of it because it has charge in there and I don't know anything about charge. I only know the capacitance and the energy. So I can write this out here. U equals one half CV squared. I'm asked for the potential difference. So let me solve for the potential difference here. The voltage equals two times the energy divided by the capacitance and then take the square root. So I can plug values in there now, two times 75 and then divide by the capacitance, 1.25 times 10 to the negative sixth square root. All right, so when you run this through your calculator, you're not gonna be surprised that this is a large voltage. Uh, for this situation here, it's uh, 1,095 volts, or you could say 1.1 kilovolts. Okay, so that's a little bit different than this diagram here, uh, but that uh, would be how you find that. If you know the energy and the capacitance, you can find the voltage there. Very straightforward application of this equation. And so this brings me to a discussion about the applications of capacitors. Many applications of capacitors are because they hold energy. Uh, there's other applications. Um, when you move the plates between those two capacitors, uh, it's sensitive to a voltage change. Remember that voltage changes when you change the distance between those plates. So uh, applications of capacitors. First, hold energy. Uh, this is an old style type of flash. Uh, I don't know if this dates me, but um, you can get disposable camera with film in it and there's a flash in there and you press a button on that camera in order to charge up the flash well that flash in there that what you're charging up is actually a capacitor and then once that capacitor gets charged it tells you that it's done charging and then it holds that charge until it's ready to cause that light and so there's a lot of light there's a lot of energy delivered all at once for that light for the flash and so that's a an example of a a capacitor to, we're holding energy a defibrillator you saw in the last example holds energy so we can deliver a current to the heart uh, the voltage between the plates is sensitive to distance between the plates and an example of this is keyboards the keys on your keyboard there's a capacitor below each key and you can see when you press the key down the distance between that the plates uh, mushes the dielectric in there of course there's a dielectric in there um, it mushes it and it changes the voltage in a circuit and so uh, the circuits in your computer would be able to sense that change and register that you press that key down here's some actual physical capacitors you can see some around uh, some are wrapped up some are square and flat okay so there's lots of types of capacitors and you can see that there's different types of capacitors here. There's ceramic capacitors, there's film capacitors, there's aluminum electrolyte capacitors, there's different types of capacitors, and you can see that all of these have different uses of them. We can see in the middle here for all capacitors, there's um, smoothing, noise filtering, bypassing, uh, coupling or blocking. So those are things capacitors do. High frequency coupling or um, bypassing. Uh, so those are ceramic capacitors. Those are really cool to work with. Um, what else is down here? A motor start, start, spot welding. We have capacitors holding energy in order to deliver a charge. Um, instead of um, monitoring the flow of charge or current in a circuit. Over on the film capacitors, uh, what am I seeing here? Uh, peak voltage detectors. So these are the ones that maybe um, are used in being sensitive to uh, voltages changing, right? They're not holding energy so much or uh, monitoring a circuit, but actually um, detecting voltage. So those are some applications of capacitors.